We have so many stories in our lives, but our stories are not always heard. On the Hear My True Story podcast, we tell our own true stories. Before the white car backed, our head teacher had scattered. Looking at him, I could only see his tie that was flying backwards, waving at us, and he disappeared in thin air. I want to share my life story. I want to share my voice with the people because I know that uh, just a small joke I can tell through this, this podcast, it will make someone smile. When you ask me what I fear most in life, I would definitely respond to you and say it's fear itself. We are fighting for togetherness. We are fighting for equal rights. We are fighting to end injustice. You don't have to be a storyteller or writer because, guess what? Life writes the best stories. Hear my true story. This is your favorite time of the week with your number one, one podcast. Hear my true story. My dear listeners, welcome back to Hear My Two Story Podcast. It is me, your host, Otako, and I'm so happy to be with you this wonderful week. For those who are listening to this podcast from your various podcasting streaming platforms, as Otako, I want to say we are so happy to have you every time you listen to this podcast. And for those who are watching our podcast on YouTube, I want to tell you guys, we are happy for you that you are watching our podcast on YouTube. And for those who are here for the first time, this is your Mighty Story Podcast. We share personal stories, personal conversations, sometimes also talk about educative issues, educative materials. People who are interested in so many things can always find them on this wonderful podcast. So anyway, this is Hear My Two Story. It's a podcast where we share personal stories and personal conversations. Well, today is, is quite a, a unique day. A unique week and I want to share with you my personal story. I want to talk about something that is so deep to me. A very important topic that people fear to talk about. But most especially, it's a very difficult topic to talk about with kids. I mean, it's a big topic, but I cannot promise you that I can I'll really talk much about it. What I can promise is that I'll try to talk about it in a simple and thoughtful way. So, this is my personal story. So, there was this day, I was outside enjoying the sun with my daughter. I have a daughter. She's still small. She's around 23 months, almost making 24 months. That's me making two years soon. Then as we are walking on the street, we came across a snail. It was dried up because it was hit by the sun. So it was dead. So then I saw the snail and then I was like, oh my God, the snail is dead. I mean, as soon as that word came out of my mouth, I got to realize, oh, how, how, how do I talk about this topic with this small 
child of mine that word dead i mean it it triggered a lot of memories and thoughts to me as a person you see as an educator in germany i learned how to talk about such topics how to approach such topics with kids we were taught how to consider everything from religion family values culture but at this moment in that particular moment i i, I was just a dad i was a father you know i was trying, i was just trying to find words to make something that is so big feel less frightening you know and then my mind drafted back to my childhood in uganda i know i was raised in a very small village in the district of kamuli this village is called busiwa it's a very small village by that time when, when i was a kid it was so small you know everything that happens in the village so the most important thing here is that i remembered when i was a kid we did not as we children we did not have formal conversation about death because it was just part of life it was just part of life so w- when someone died in our village or when someone passed away in our village the entire community came together schools could close and everyone kids included had a role to play we as children could bring food and water to the grieving families we could help out with preparations we could ask where support is needed as children and we could be part of it because this was a really community responsibility we were in it together I remember when my grandmother passed away way back in the 90s I was a small kid I was so young I remember that I was really really young So when she passed away as a kid I was also expected to take part in the rituals of the family of the culture Before she would be laid to rest each of the family members had to say a last form goodbye to her we were expected to pass by the corpse or call it the dead body of my grandmother and say a form goodbye this is where things became tighter for me as a child i did I did not like it. I did not want to do that ritual. I was so scared. And then I ran away. I ran into the banana plantations. I passed the banana plantations. I went into the coffee plantations running so fast. I was running if I remember I must I must have been so fast faster than a a lion running. I'm telling you, I was so fast running for my life. And then from from the coffee plantations I crossed I went down into the valleys from the valleys I went I went faster into the swamps running so fast 
But then the community said, no, we can't lay the grandmother to rest. Everyone in the family has to, so, to say a formal goodbye. That is where my challenge was. The entire community came together and they looked for me. They chased me. They found me deep down in the swamps hiding. I was brought back to say a formal goodbye to my grandmother. This quite traumatized me as a kid by then. And I kept thinking about why, why, why am I forced to take part of this ritual? Why? Why? As a kid, I didn't like it. So, this experience made me to to learn something. That as much as rituals are so important to the community or to the family, it is also important for for the families to respect these kids' decisions, to respect a decision by a child that, no, I am not interested in the ritual right now. I can't do it. Because as a child, perhaps the child is not ready. I was not ready at that time. Now, here is where more interesting it becomes. Now, I am living in Germany where actually death isn't such a communal event. Death, I don't know how people are, but death here is something that is not easily talked about. I find myself navigating this balance differently. You know? For example, here, if a pet passed away, if a pet died, or maybe like that snail that I found on the street, it is more about how do I choose to deal with this? How do I choose to introduce this concept of death to my child as a person, as a parent? So, I have come to believe that the concept of letting things happen spontaneously is good. I mean, if a child is not interested in the ritual, I don't push it. I don't push that to the child to do it. But if they are interested, we might... Create something simple with that child to have a ritual for them to understand. For example, like moving the snail from the street to the garden. It is a way to gently, slowly, it is a way to gently introduce the concept of life and death to a small kid. And this is what I can say. This is what I've learned as a person. Both as a, a parent and also as an educator. Sometimes it's the best way to let things unfold naturally. You know? To create rituals that fit the moment with the child. To respect the child's decision about something.
It, it, it is about honoring the past and also being sensitive to the present. I know it is it can it can be so difficult for a parent to talk about this topic. But as a parent living in the global north in Germany where the rituals are not communal or village then I have a responsibility as a family as a parent to find my way to find my way with the child together how we can naturally let things unfold like me at that moment when I found a snail with my kid then we moved the snail to the garden and then I said well that snail is going to support the garden so that more plants more grass grows it was a small moment simple but it, perhaps it introduced a sensitive topic to the child well it is dried it goes to the garden perhaps that's a simple way of learning about the concept of life death and the cycle of life things die grow die and they continue that's the cycle So, my dear listeners, I want to tell you thank you for listening to this wonderful podcast. That was my story. It, it is not that magical. And for those who are watching this wonderful video, thank you also for watching or talk sharing these personal stories. And I'll say something that people have been commenting on the videos and asking me to talk about certain topics. Mainly for the viewers on YouTube, I know who were enjoying the past topics about living in Germany which way of uh navigating the system in Germany uh, how do i improve my language in Germany how do i find a vocation training in Germany how do i find right information when i'm deciding to live in Germany as an immigrant well i see your comments i see your request as a taco right now i have some time and i'm going to do some research and i'll be sharing this wonderful information with you guys on my wonderful youtube channel yeah my true story And for those who have enjoyed this story, I have more stories on this YouTube channel in a podcast format of audio, but you can only listen to that. And for those who like to go to subscribe to our uh, podcast, Yeah, My Two Story, on the various podcasting streaming platforms, you are free to find us on Spotify, on Apple Podcast, and many more podcast streaming platforms. Yeah. For those who would like to be informed all the time about the new videos coming on YouTube channel, please guys subscribe to the YouTube channel and don't miss out the new videos that will be coming more and more. Most especially educative informative videos will be coming on this wonderful podcast. Well, as Otako, I don't want to waste your time and I want to say bye for now. Keep enjoying our wonderful podcast and don't forget we are happy to always sharing our personal stories with you. If you have something that you'd like to be talked about or to be shared about on this wonderful podcast, here my two story, leave it in the comment for those who are watching on the video. YouTube comments, you can leave a comment. For those who are listening on the various podcasting streaming platforms, you can also send us a comment or a feedback through the link provided in the description. Thank you for listening and watching here my true story. And for now and for today and for this week I would like to say bye for now. Hope to hear from you next time on this wonderful podcast here my true story. It has been me Otako your host.
Thank you for listening to our podcast, Music by Edwin Matovo, hosted and produced by Otako. Subscribe to our podcast for more stories and visit us on our website, yemaitruestory.com, for more stories. All the links are listed in the show notes of this podcast.